Hey everyone, this is Jebro talking today about uh, trait lines, all the new core stuff which is coming in before the Heart of Fours, which is what they announced on the Ready Up, which was on the Friday recently. Basically, there's some new stuff happening, and hopefully on your screen now you will see the new idea of what they're bringing in, and that's going to be the free trait lines instead of the five or even six, I suppose you'll have as well when you get those elite specializations. Um, basically, you have three lines to choose from. So you have uh, these little arrows on the side, which kind of, you know, it looks like you access that and then you pick that trait line. So say, for example, which is what I'm going to talk about today, engineer, I would pick grenade, um, I would pick explosives, firearms, and say tools, I don't know, just as an example, not necessarily going to do that. Um, but you just have those three lines and you dedicate points right to the end of that line. So that's exactly how it's going to work. So you can't go into other lines too much, but you've got three dedicated lines. It means you can really focus on those three lines as well also what they've done is they've removed the stats which you would normally get from each line so sometimes you might have gone into a stat line and i'm talking about generally i'm not just talking about pvp i'm obviously a pvp mainly but that's not what i'm just talking about here i'm talking about pve and also world v world so you can now select you know the line you want to pick okay your choice has gone down to three from like five um, but I think it's a lot better, you know, you don't have to go on those lines to get the actual stats, you can go into those lines to get the abilities you want to get. But, also, this is very interesting as well, the the new, the artwork looks quite cool, I think it's still, you know, something they're playing around with and still mucking about with anyway, but I think it's going to just make everything a little bit easier for newer players as well, and also, you know, it's going to bring in a lot of build variation, because you're not just relying on those stats and those lines, it's just the traits, and then you can work on your stats elsewhere, which is what they kind of mentioned, but I don't want to go into too much detail, because I'm not 100% sure myself, and I want to wait for some more info anyway, so they're just going to assign those points differently, um, obviously in PvP, and I'm guessing they'll bump up the stats on your gear um, and also on amulets and uh, accessories and whatnot as well. So, with this in mind, and this is going to come out in uh, this is going to, well, I don't know when it's going to come out. It's going to come out before Heart of Thorns. So these core trait changes are going to be in, not the specializations, the core trait changes. So what we can expect now is, especially from the engineer, which is what I'm mainly going to talk about, <clears throat> is going to be basically awesome. That's that's what I'm going to say. I'm going to give you some details about how awesome it is, but I am loving the new stuff that's coming in. Examples, like main things I think for um, engineer, the Mortar Elite, which was completely... I'm not going to say rubbish, even if it was, um, but I never used it once. In a, I used it once in a SPVP game by mistake, and that was recently because of the uh, stability stacks you get off it. But then I was like, okay, well, this might be kind of useful in World v World, but otherwise, yeah, not really. So, kind of, uh, they've done something awesome with it. Actually, they've turned it into a kit. So now it's a kit. I mean, obviously, those traits are going to be. Um, relevant to that kit as well, but it's an elite, which is quite cool. It's got a ton of combo fields. You see on the screen right now, you know, it's got a lot of cool abilities. The artwork is still from the flamethrower, though, they mentioned. Um, but otherwise, it looks pretty sweet, actually. Also, they showed us something to do with the elixirs, which was pretty damn awesome as well. So, the elixir X, which is um, your elite skill, obviously, on the engineer. Is got a well, an engineer's got an elite fifth skill on your tool belt now. You can see that on the screen as well. But with the Elixir S, the cool elite, the uh, uh, I guess elite tool belt skill, I'm doing this little thing with my fingers, um, does an AoE transform at five targets, you know, five targets in an AoE is standard, polymorphing them into mowers. Um, it was very short and they said it might change, but I actually just think. Like, maybe just an increase in cooldown. I think it's absolutely epic. And the fact that it came up when, you know, I'm, me and Kolaris were casting the uh, Go For Guild Wars 2 Monthly Cup a couple of months ago, and we were talking about AoE mowers, and then this comes in, and it's like, hmm, were they watching? <laughs> but it was pretty cool. And, uh, yeah, you should be able to see that on the screen at the moment as well, or in the past. And that's a, quite a cool ability as well. Um so let's go on to something else. We're going to talk about the med kit next. Now that's changed completely. I mean, 
they, it looks like they've added some uh, more usage to it. They've actually, you know, pulled the kit in and said, right, this is something that people just do not use, you know. I mean, I don't use it at all. I play around with it for fun, but otherwise not really at all. And it's got some new animations. So the like the first one, you know, you, you actually blast them in the face with like a breeze, he, like a healing breeze, I guess, um, which kind of looks like something from the... Uh, it was from the Guardianos or the Elementalist. I can't remember what the ability is called though. But it looks it looks a lot better. You've got like these syringes on your wrist, and you kind of you know you drop these things on the ground, and people can pick them up. They can remove conditions, get fury and whatnot. And you can see that on the screen as well. It's just an example. They've changed a lot of the looks of it. I think they've changed some of the uh, usage of it as well. I don't want to say like it's a hundred percent going to be this, that, the other, because I still think this is quite early. I think a lot's going to change, so I don't know. I mean, just look look at it yourself. I mean, you can see what's going on. It looks pretty good now, and uh, yeah, that's a big change as well. Um, another big thing, which I'm kind of sad about and might not be very popular with people, is the fact that they've got rid of hobo sex, and I really like those. Now, the hobo sex, or whatever you want to call them, are the backpacks you have when you're using bombs or when you're using grenades or a toolkit or whatever kit you want to use. Now what it is, is the grenades have got... the um, When you get the grenade to- kit, you actually have like a small bag of grenades, you know, in your hand. They're attached to this rope, I guess, or whatever. And you throw the grenades, you know. The, you've got the grenades actually in your hand rather than this backpack where you've kind of just throwing them from. But you're not really reaching back or anything to get them out. But now you're just throwing these grenades from this little kind of bag that you've got in your other hand, and it looks pretty sweet. Bombs are quite kind of similar, but now you've got a bomb in your hand, in your hand, in your hands, and you walk around with it, and you just, you know, you kind of plant it on the floor. Like, the animation is quite cool. You've still got that animation to put your arms down, but you've got the bomb in your hands, and you're walking around with it. That's awesome. Toolkit is still, you know, you've still got the actual spanner in your hand or the wrench if you're an American. Um, So you're still walking around with that, which is kind of obvious. And uh, also, you know, pretty cool. People don't didn't like their back pieces being hidden by the hobo sex. And that's fair enough. But I actually kind of didn't mind because it just felt, you know, oh, I've got this big kit of stuff and I'm just going to walk around with it and plant it on the ground or throw it or do whatever I want. And I liked going into my backpack and just pulling out all this stuff. I thought that was kind of cool, but I actually really like the change as well. Animation-wise, I mean, you know, it's a bit, it's a bit cooler. You got this, you know, these bombs were quite big. The fact that you just kind of planted them on the floor and now you've got animation for that is actually really, really awesome. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to talk just quickly about the trait lines and what I think is going to be uh, very cool in them myself. You can see the info on the screen. There's also screenshots and whatnot that I might might put in the comments below um, in the description. But a lot of this info is out there. You can you know pause uh, you can pause the video so you can actually see that kind of PowerPoint presentation, which is what they did. I think they mentioned that you know some of the artwork wasn't ready for the engineer and stuff that they couldn't actually go into it that far. Um, to show you the actual trait line like they kind of did with the elementalist. So um, it's actually, I actually kind of preferred it because I think, you know, it gives it just defines the information a lot better. Um, okay, so first thing I'm going to go through is explosives. Um, things like uh, Grenadier. Now, the range is the same as the... Ex- their standard baseline range is going to be the same as the trait where you actually trait it in to get a greater range. Um, so you can't actually trait into that anymore. And the, the also the additional grenade is now a, in the baseline. They've kind of started to get rid of this stuff where, you know, extra stuff and extra range. We're just going to get rid of that because that seems silly because it should just be in the game anyway. You shouldn't have to just go for a trait to make you use a weapon or to, to the best efficiency, you know, which I think is great because you won't necessarily go into Grenadier. Um, sorry, you just shouldn't go into that for that reason, you know, and that's good. That's a really good thing to come in. Evasive powder keg. Now, this is a really, really good one. Um, so now it's a blast finisher trait in the grand master line. So when you dodge, you will actually create a blast. So you've got a blast on dodge. So it's a bit like, I mean, think of um, the elementalist when you're in the earth attunement and you do 
do the effects when you dodge. So you dodge and you get a blast in the earth achievement, or you know you did a fire blast or whatever. This is going to be permanent for for engineers. So what you might want to get some you know a lot of vigor regeneration so you can get a ton of blasts. The extra blast you could have in your healing blasting might um, field fire fields for might and stuff. That's so cool. It's going to be awesome. I think you know Peters was pretty in. Um, ecstatic about this to be fair he was quite kind of happy about this uh, edition and i think you know he kept saying oh you don't want to do that because you're not going to get the uh, evasive powder keg uh, that was a really bad impression of john Pierce, by the way so uh, don't copy it and sorry if you're watching <laughs> uh, acp is now a not back uh, on D destinate so that's accelerated pack turret sorry um it's Accelerant packs, sorry, sorry. And uh, now it's, the knockback isn't on destroy, it's actually on detonate. So you have to detonate the actual turret for, for that to actually give you that knockback rather than the actual, you know, destruction. So supply crate, if you threw it on a point um, and people destroyed it, you know, you get knocked back. Um, you have to kill the turrets and, you know, spending all this time to kill turrets and then getting knocked back afterwards for the hell of it. You know, it's kind of, uh, you know, and troublesome is the word I'll use. But also, you know, turrets were kind of nerfed recently and they kind of feels like they're going to be removed. I don't think they would remove them completely, but they're pretty much becoming next to useless um, other than the supply crate drop. The supply crate drop was never something you used for the turrets. You used it for the stun, uh, for the blast and for the heal, you know, for the med kits and whatnot. So it's no biggie. But, you know, the extra little, the detonate's cool. I think that's a good idea. So you have control completely over that rather than just, you know, random, ex you know, they die. You could detonate them before and it would work. But, you know, this is now full on detonate, not back. Um, I'm talking about it too much, sorry. <laughs> Pistol 1 and Rifle 5 are now explosions. Uh, they can synergize a lot more with your abilities. So that's pretty cool as well. Those are kind of the main changes. Um, you're going to see the PowerPoint up as well. But other than that, we're going to go on to Firearms. Now, Firearms has got a new trait for the pistol, and it's more condition-focused, which is actually pretty nice. We've got then Incendiary Powder um, was actually moved to Firearms as well, and it's now a Grandmaster. Uh, it's actually been combined with Napalm Specialist as well, so that's going to be pretty nice. Incendiary Powder was a bloody awesome trait in the first place, but now moving it up to the Grandmaster seems pretty needed. Um, with that Napalm Specialist as well, you know you've got an extra percentage of burn duration, um, but... You know, it seems like they, they're getting rid of the durations. They're actually, like, moving towards an intensity thing. They've mentioned this a couple of times in different places about the potential for the... about intensity rather than actual duration time. So, you know, you stack another you know, burning tick on them, the burning damage increases. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. If you want to write in the comments below and just up talk about that, then... Go for it. Start a discussion. Uh, tell me if I'm wrong, of course. Um, Juggernaut is now also... Um, gives pulsing stability. Now, they didn't say whether or not this is in top of the extra toughness and what and might that you get. Um, I'm not too sure, but Juggernaut makes sense, you know. Put stability in there as well. Because, you know, it's a Juggernaut, you know. You should be stable. So add stability to that. So that might make people take that trick. I can see that actually being something very popular with um, PvP builds, actually. That should be great. Uh, so I'm looking forward to playing around with that myself in some kind of bomb build as well with some extra protection. That should be pretty sick. And then mixing it up maybe with the dodging bombs. Um, dodge on... Blast on dodge trait as well, which should be quite nice. Going to inventions now. So, um, shield gives uh, protection in one of the adept, uh, in the adept of this trait line, which is pretty nice. Um, and also twenty percent cooldown reduction. So that's actually like a quite a nice adept score. I just thought that was quite nice. Um, also, the heal skill triggers a blast finisher as well, which is also a nice addition. And there's. Uh, and heal heal explosion they called it on the actual traits on the um, PowerPoint, which is quite interesting. So you blast, sorry, um, your blast finishes. That's the blast finisher heal. Then we got four or five turrets and metal plating for the turrets, which were both combined into one trait as well. Um, alchemy, we're going to move on to next. So 
traits for all the um, traits for all the kits are currently being decided as well. So they're just going. They've still got a lot of work to do. They're still playing around with stuff. They're waiting for feedback as well, when we can get in and maybe test this and see if we can help them out. And then waiting for feedback as well that came from Ready Up, which was quite nice. Um, otherwise, HP, HGH and also fast acting elixirs uh, were combined. So the reduce uh, reduction in recharge on the elixirs was uh, is is you know a really really good thing and they should because you know it's gonna entice people to use elixirs a lot more because you know HGH was one of the main reasons we used it and I like elixirs I think they're great and elixir X you know on that elite bar and then also on the elite tool sk- uh, tool belt if you can you know <laughs> the polymorphing or the uh, transforms that you can get with that. Is going to create some awesome plays and also, you know, it's going to be very useful and things like World v World or PvE. Can you imagine a couple of engineers? You've got Elixir X, you throw it into a crowd of people, you know, you've got like 10 mowers running around. <laughs> it's going to cause so much hell. That's going to be epic. Um, and going into tools, uh, Speedy Kits was moved to the Master, but combined with Kit um, Refinement, so it creates an attack or spell on that kit when activated. So you get the swiftness and you get the um, spell that comes with that kit. I mean, the thoughts that I have really on the fact that a lot of stuff is changing for Engineer, they're good. Uh, I feel good about the the actual class and what's coming in for it. Um, and also like the the fact that a lot of these traits have been changed. There's things like, you know, a lot of things have been combined, which is great because, you know, they felt like, eh, what's the point in going for this when I can go for speedy kits and, you know, get this vigor regen and... You know, what's the point? Why am I going for something which is so rubbish where I can get something so good in just, you know, a master line? And it's, you know, it didn't really feel sometimes that you could really be that adaptive with your build and like just change it up a bit, you know. But now it does feel like I'm feel like you can. I mean, things like you know they've got something where they called it called it Robo Legs, and it's like leg mods is removed, and they've combined some other traits, and you know it reduces cripple, immob, chill, and it actually increases your swiftness effect. So you know you're going faster than the regular swiftness, which is kind of you know what you got a bit from power shoes. Um, I think they're still keeping that as well. Um, but you know that's that's good. That's even innovative. That's moving forward, and that's what we want to see from Arena Net in terms of these builds and how they're creating them, and what we're actually going to be doing to move move forward. You know, we want to see this kind of um, evolution, I guess, and I think we're going to get it. I think the fact that we can go into three lines is better as well. You know, reducing the amount of choice in the other lines is good for things like PvP balance. It's going to make it a lot easier. Um, I think it's going to make it easier for people to choose builds. I think people that are coming into the game are going to have a lot um, easier time. I do think it needs a little bit of work on the UI because I think that I think that's you know it says on the stream as well it's under construction so you know that I think that's going to be an important thing um, which gets worked on as well to make it bigger and more in you know more visible for people and a little bit more clear maybe as to what you're actually doing for new new players um but generally loving it guys thank you very much I know I've covered a lot of stuff what they covered in the ready up but that's just kind of the stuff I was interested really in uh, I just drop some comments below. Don't forget to like the video as well. Did you like me talking about this? Did I talk a bit of crap halfway through the video? Did I mumble a bit? I'm kind of recording this in one go because I'm very reactive. I, I just think about things at a time. If I write a script, I will just sound like a robot. I'm, you know, I very much just talk the way I want to speak. I speak from the heart. No, I'm joking. Um, from my shiny dome. Um, but anyway, thanks very much, guys, for uh, watching the video, taking the time out. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe. Check out my Twitter, at Jeb Dan, and I'll see you very soon.